for a presentation on Everyone Needs to Own Equity, um, talking about our journey to create an inclusive equity team at our central office in Stone Ferry Schools. <laughs> so we did create a Padlet, but now that they have the Padlet for all the different um, events, I think that would be a better place to capture any notes or questions. Feel free to, this can be interactive throughout the presentation. If you have questions, let us know. Um, but also any things that you want to know, put that on the website um, so we can all reflect on that later. That would be awesome. Okay, so who are we? Okay, so I'm Tundi Mamori. I'm the Executive Assistant to the Superintendent in Sun Prairie. Uh, I have been with the district for almost 16 years. I spent... Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Well, like, you yeah. have you. No, I just didn't have you. Oh, even for a few minutes. Yeah. You're totally fine. No judgment zone. If you want to come back later, we'll fully okay. agree. When we're talking about equity, there is no yep. judgment zone. <laughs> no problem. No so, problem. So, um, yeah. so, like I said, I've been at the district for 16 years. I worked eight years at Bird Elementary in the front office, and both my daughters went to Bird. And then I moved to district office.
being one of uh, a handful of Indian children in the district, I knew that uh, it would be isolating for them. And when my daughter graduated, she could not wait to leave Sun Prairie. She was like, I need to go somewhere where there are a lot more people that look and sound and talk and eat like me. So, um, yeah, but it's cr crazy how much the district, I think when I first started, the operating budget for our district was, ooh, under Dr. Culver, may have been like 60 million. So if you look at that now, it's like 115. It's just mind boggling. Okay. Oh, and I'm talking about this. So who are we? So you guys know a little bit about our district. So really, who is the district support center? So we have about 100 employees. Um, it doesn't look like when you walk in because the way our offices are set up, but we include all district-wide administrators and, support, and their support staff and all these offices. So the assistant superintendents, the superintendents, the directors of elementary, our student services technology, school operations and student policy, where Michelle works, our new uh, systemic equity and inclusion director, and then professional development, which will move to Central Heights next year. And then all our operational uh, human resources, business and finance. Um, and then our athletics and activities office is also, is housed at the high school, but um, our director is part of all the cabinet level. So we brought this slide because why is it important? So while we know that the most important relationship for a child in our district is this teacher in the classroom in front of them, to get to that point, all these people also play a part. And a lot of times the first person that a parent, a caregiver, a grandparent, um, an employee has is walking through the doors at our offices. So if we're not modeling equity, if we're not actively doing the work, it's not gonna happen. So that's why Michelle and I have become very passionate about this and creating a, uh, our own equity team at the district office. So why specifically um, this project to get the equity team going? Um, we both had the opportunity to partake in a book study that happened last summer through the Wisconsin uh, Public Education Network. Um, despite the best intentions, why ra how racial inequality thrives in good schools by Dr. John Diamond. Um, awesome book study, we got to really dig deep into some issues and at the end of that study, it really was a call to action. What can we do? How can we be a part of, of the solution and, and do something? So when we both had to come up with an annual goal within our jobs, we talked to each other and said, hey, we should do something together. If we know we want to do something with equity, what is that going to look like? Um, Shanju was, has the privilege of working with our, our DELT team and the cabinet and knowing that there was an equity team handled by the, the cabinet, um, but identified the opportunity that we really would love to carry that work more widespread to all of the staff at the office. Um, so once we identified that's what we wanted to do, we reached out to our leaders and also had a administrative support um, person to help us as well, had full support from day one. They said, yes, this is something we have wanted to do 100%. We want to see this happen. They're just working on so many other initiatives. They also wanted to empower us to be those anti-racist leaders to help lead that work. So really great.
superintendent, but unless the work is happening, nothing's gonna change. So PEG's strategy is, they start at the top with our district equity leadership team, which is basically our cabinet. So the district-wide administrators. Then it got pushed through to our sites through our leadership, so our leadership collaborative. So that's all like principals across the district, um, program managers, I think Jamie is on. Jamie's also part of our cabinet as well. And the final step are these site equity teams. So each school, each site has a site equity team. And basically it's about seven to 10 people. Um, we visited with some equity teams and they're organized differently. Some are pretty like teacher oriented, just teachers on them. Some are more broad as far as like teachers and then they have support staff. Um, and this is where currently our cabinet serves as our equity team for our district office. Our goal is to make the equity team more broader within our office. So it includes not only our, not only administrators, but our day-to-day -day workers in facilities and grounds and HR. Because let's, we know if that work's not happening at that level, it's not going to change the system. So that was our goal. I know, you want me to run it from there? Well, we, I think, well, let's see. So how we started with this work. Um, so like I said, we first reached out to our administrators and got that support. Um, I think we talked in a cabinet meeting and talked with everyone about it and just everyone was very excited for us to get going. So then we had to look at, realistically, what are we gonna be able to do? So we set this goal in January, and we think that the school year ends in June. So we got six months. So what are we gonna do in six months? It's gonna be hard to have a robust equity team going, rearing at the seams. So we thought, we're gonna have, we're gonna first identify some participants. So we knew that we had quite a few staff that have gone through the Beyond Diversity training um, through the PEG group. So we were gonna work with those people because they had of a basis, understanding and articulation. Um, and then take, take that group and we would meet once a month. So um, I think Chandu talked a little bit about meeting with the various equity teams, getting some background, understanding how those groups function. Um, so we thought, yeah, first we wanna have these meetings once a month and just help get people excited about the work behind the work and help further identify who those anti-racist leaders are that can with the official equity team starting this year. Um, so our meeting process was all virtual at this point with the pandemic. So um, for each meeting, we would have a certain topic and we'll go through what those specific things were. A lot of times we had different speakers or presenters. Um, we would assign some homework, so just some light reading or um, some basic background knowledge. I know at one point we did like, um, oh, what are those? And then we also we also did um, looking at our framework, researching that, coming to the limits of that, just some different activities and things to do before coming into the meeting. Um, we would have the presenter or speaker or panel speak at the beginning of the meeting. Um, we'd break into small groups so we could discuss that and further um, process what we learned and what we heard. Um, and then we'd come together as a large group at the end of those meetings. And those are two hour meetings once a month. This was this was our schedule of meetings, and let's face it, during the pandemic, it was hard to get people. Um, obviously, we couldn't get them in person, but we thought it was really important that Louise Versailles, who is the person our cabinet directly works with, um, with Pacific Education Group, just to come in and remind the team who had a background in Beyond Diversity, just to remind them again of why the work and the language we use co-courageous conversation framework um, for creating that safe yes. space. Yeah. Um, and then our first guest, um, I thought I think probably one of our most successful ones was Dr. John Diamond, who was part of the book study, the professor at um, UW. Um, and he wrote the book, Despite the Best Intentions, How 
um, inequities thrive in good schools. Um, and he came in and actually gave a presentation, kind of a shorter presentation on his, his book. Uh, me and Michelle had done the book study, but most of our, our team had not. So then we uh, did an SPASD uh, co-worker panel. So we have about six, yeah. um, six people who um, we identified of um, color in our um, DSC staff. I happen to be one of the panelists. Um, talk about their experiences as someone of color, not only working in district office, but as some of parents in the district, and just in general, as your experiences as someone who's not white in the community, in the state, in the country. Um, you know, I think those personal one-on-one -on -one stories with your coworkers and people that you you know, you can read any book you want, you can do all that, but when someone in front of you who you work with every day tells you their story, the impact of that on you, I don't think that can be, um, it was powerful. It was, it was super powerful, and people, people were like, wow, that happened to you? Yeah, that happens to me, it still happens to me. So, and then as we know, the statistics in Wisconsin are pretty horrendous, between, uh, for um, especially African American males. We know that, and our district statistics uh, kind of match what's happening in the state as far as um, achievement, discipline, um, you name it. Uh, and we were able to dig a little bit deeper too, which was, I mean, we had Kurt who was able to speak to our own testing scores, mm -hmm. but we also were able to look at some resources for at state level and national level and different factors, you know, the intersectionality of single moms of black families, you know, the, the different factors that can really exacerbate that gap. Yeah. So, that, and then finally, and our, we actually haven't shown this to our, because of the way school ended and uh, summer vacation, we did a student panel with some of our graduates. And I've watched it and it's pretty impactful. And I'm, I'm sure that our group is, when they do view it and we reflect on it, you know, these are what you would call pretty successful, strong uh, young women. And the stories they share are, you know, they're just incredible. And um, despite the weather, despite, you know, the, what looks like success, like the things they face is, is pretty, impact I mean, it's, it's impactful. So, I'm looking forward to following up with our group on that. So now what? So we did these meetings. They were awesome. Um, so what are our next steps? So as Chandu mentioned, we still have to present that final pan student panel to our group. Um, but we are taking all of our findings and bringing that to cabinet in the next month, in the next couple weeks, actually, um, with our recommendations of, of what we would like to see that equity team look like and who we would recommend and who shows interest, we've done surveys after every meeting to say who's interested, what sort of role do you want to play? So really um, bringing that together. Now that we have this new director of, Equ of equity, we're meeting with him in a couple days um, to talk through how, how can we further collaborate these. Um, I, our one goal I have is really working with the schools. I would love to get more interaction with the schools and the equity teams there. And let's have joint efforts, let's do projects together Let's be aware of what each other are doing so we can further promote the work. Yeah. Um, so working on that and getting that team started for this school year um, is really our next big goal. Along with this one. Yes. Getting all staff, minimally all staff trained on beyond diversity. Because so, yeah, we see no reason to not have that baseline for everyone. There, like that should be a mandate among if this is if this is what our district is standing for, then everyone who is employed in our district needs to have doesn't mean that, you know, we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of years of, of uh, racism. It's not going to be solved by everyone taking Beyond Diversity. But everyone needs to take Beyond Diversity. Get the conversation going. Get the conversations right. need, to, need to happen. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we have some other ideas that we'll present to you on what that can look like if we have specific events at the district office or through the schools 
or if we engage in physical studies or maybe some other project for community initiatives we can take part in and we can um, contribute from a district outside perspective. And then obviously sharing our experience with yeah. here today yeah. with you fine people. <laughs> um, the more we talk about it, the more we can get it out there. I think the, the more awareness and the more momentum. like when you mentioned um, staff and things like that, it actually should be mandatory. It should yeah. be an option. And I think that's I think that's where we're I mean yeah. our if that if, if it's every child every day and PEG, I mean this is our framework, then every employee needs to and our goal yeah. our goal is that everyone in our district support center, I mean obviously across our district, but we're talking right now about our district needs to take that training. It needs to be mandatory, and it needs it to be also something that not is just shared with teachers, who then share it with students, but how do you get it into the hands of the parents? That that can be a dinner conversation mm -hmm. around the table of what can I, as a family, as a parent, what can we, what can we do? How can I raise my child different mm -hmm. to see people the correct way that they should be seen? Because it's not so much hundreds of years of racism, but it's hundreds of years of un unlearned behavior yeah. mm -hmm. that we just have to like be figure out like how can we erase this. Because that's not right, yeah. and put it in this, and just really trying to get people to get that complete understanding. Uh, just because you look at me, don't look at me and see a black person. If you see me and see a person, mm -hmm. get to know me based on me. Don't look at me and and, and go like yeah. automatically to like stereotypical. Yes, yes. sure. You know, yeah. like yeah. stereotypical yeah. person or not. Get just to know the way I dress or the way I look. Right. Yeah. Like get to know totally. me for my character. Because I've had plenty of people that spoke to me on the phone, mm -hmm. and then they ain't seen that person. They ain't seen that person. And then you can you can just we tell like you can tell somebody yes. reaction is like yes. completely yes. different from when you yes. talk to them virtually or oh, yeah. on the phone. I mean, I, what I've gotten is like wow. they'll be right. talking to me on, right. on the phone. <laughs> like they to talk to me on the phone and everything, and then I'll like tell my name, and then it's usually oh that's so exotic or wow that's so different. Where did you like, learn? Right, where did right, you learn right. to speak English so well? <laughs> Like, like, why is that? Why is that your first question? For exactly. Why, why? exactly. why does that matter right now? Exactly. And I've had that happen plenty of times. I was talking somewhere, having a great conversation. I'm like, what's your name? I'm like, Tanisha. And they're like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Tanisha. Why would I tell somebody that I'm like, my name is Brian? And then we meet in person and we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> right. Right. Like, that's, that's a very, you should that's, not have this. Like, right. Yeah, like, I'm not, you're not what I thought you were. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Oh, and, 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 and <laughs> having, I mean, working in a school, like I've had that experience. So, um, you know, I was a front office staff. And I'll be honest, we had, I had, like, those microaggressions happened in front of me. And, like, now I look back at it and say, oh my God, I didn't say anything. Yeah. Right. And the now it's like, no, now I, I'm saying something. This is not right. But like this is happening in our school. And that first experience that a family has when they walk in, or an employee has when they walk into our system, mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to impact their experience. I mean, if it's a negative experience, that's 
first of all, it's gonna take time to even like repair if it's even possible. And then to like get that the trust back is I mean, honestly, I, I can look back at the experiences I had at the school level and I think it still happens in our district right. office level. I mean, we have families come in every day, we have employees come in every day. Um, unless our our staff there understands yeah right yeah, have, we have to have that baseline it's not it's not gonna change I mean it's systemic mm -hmm. it, the answer has to be systemic too yeah. and you know there are people who are working in schools who don't think there's an issue oh yeah I actually you know? have folks that have been yeah that's that's just crazy they don't that's I mean I, I mean I take calls every day um, you know after the plug, I mean, sorry <laughs> February first of Patrick Marsh. I've taken calls every day since then, both sides, like people who don't think there's an issue at all, and then obviously- Or that we shouldn't teach race in school. Yes. Or we shouldn't, you know, or, or you know, you're not teaching, you're not gonna be teaching CRT, or why are you focusing on that? And, and um, but yeah, you talk about the conversations at the table, and I love that so much. Because I even think growing up, I mean, like I said, I grew up in a, a, a minority in my neighborhood, but still with that white privilege. Right? And I, I remember growing up thinking I was so ahead of the curve because I didn't see color, right? I was colorblind. And I've learned so much from that point in my life on how wrong that is. But we have to have the education at our level to be able to articulate that, to be able to get our families engaged in those conversations at every level. And, and, and it has to be like, you know, we can, we can try and, and you know, try to say this is important and we need to do until, until the people you. the people who are holding the power like admit the issue and move forward it's not it's not like that. And, and to put that yeah. on the people who are already being impacted by it you know you you've probably sat in affinity groups I've sat in affinity yeah. groups and they can be pretty like I sat on one I got off of it and I told Brad I don't think I can do that one again right. because you know it's it's even after our, our our one that we did just with our six employees, like we met afterwards and some of them came to me and they were just like, wow, that was that was painful because you're reliving things that have happened and and you don't and until you reflect on them, like I have not, I never reflected on my public education. And the things that happened to me until I went through it with my own daughter. And when she was talking to me about things she went through, I looked back and I was like, wow, I went through that too. Right. But I never saw it, like I never, it hurt. It hurts, like when I think about it now, I look back and I'm like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. um, she actually, you know, God bless her, like was able to articulate it and, and, and rate, tell me about it and, and address it with, People, like I didn't have any of that ability to do that, but it hurts just as much now as it did. I'm sure when it happened, I just didn't. I didn't really think about it until I saw it through her eyes. And that's why I felt with one of these books that they gave us to read not too long mm -hmm. ago, um, and I was bothered because mm -hmm. I said, "Is there some book on how to interact and educate black children?" Mm -hmm. I said, "No." Teachers, um, you know, have been doing this um, one thing. So I've been teaching for 25 years, and I promised Ms. Day in Stonington, mm -hmm. and I'm like, wait, so you've been not teaching black kids the same way for 25 years as you've taught other kids? So it kind of made me really think and reflect on some things. Um, and at least some of the literature that they had us reading was almost like how to engage and interact with people that don't look like you, but mm -hmm. in such a polite way of saying it. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling one of my counterparts, I said, the fact that there's a book that they're giving teachers on how to interact and engage with staff that don't look like you, I said, that bothers me. Mm -hmm. Because I don't need a book to tell me how to treat you. Yeah. Because it's still, it, you're still, it's still separation. Like, right, it's, it's making you more aware. You're separating them from another, yes. another yes. Yes. group of kids. Yep. Like, yep. we're all human as a group. You just gotta learn how to, you gotta create a relationship. Yep. Yep. You have to, you have to. And you gotta work at it. Like, every relationship you have, you gotta work at it. Mm -hmm.
build that trust and that bridge. So. And like you said, a lot of trust has been broken. Yes. Especially Definitely. with some of the things that were taking place. Um, and I guess for me, um, I'm truly very understanding in regards to certain people's opinions and things like that. But when the um, Petra Mark situation happened and I had a staff member say, well, I don't see the problem. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, wait, what did she say? Yeah. And I'm like, and I had this like, did you take a PSA? I'm back. Like, I know. And it's like, and I remember telling her, I said, I can, and I can respect the fact that you feel like you don't see the problem, but it makes me wonder what else you're not seeing. Mm -hmm. If you, I get you can't relate what it's like to be an African American. You can't relate what it's to what it's like to be an African American woman. Mm -hmm. But you cannot tell me that you cannot relate to the fact that you can clearly read this mm -hmm. and see that there's something here that, like something within you should resonate, like, it's it not feel right. right. Yeah. Something here is not right. You know, right. And, and I think both Michelle and I had that, we had that rap, like we looked at it like, oh dear God. Right. Like, like, who did this? Like, like, whoa. Like, whoa. And, so, like, and there was other questions on that thing, too. There, was a, lot, there was a lot of things, like, but that, and that, you've got to be able to connect on some level. And that's the thing, is when you hear someone yeah. say that I don't see the issue in that, mm -hmm. it really makes me kind of look at that person and just be like, so are you, is your mindset what's wrong with the world? Because you don't see that this is, there's a problem here. Mm -hmm. Like you can't even feel in your heart that this makes me feel bad. Like even though I don't relate to, I can't physically feel like I can relate to slavery. Like I can't physically relate to yes. slavery. I wasn't there. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it's something that affected people that look like me. Mm -hmm. So even though this was what was written, it doesn't affect you because it doesn't relate to people that look like you. It still relates to people. And you can't in your heart make that connection that to say, ask these questions to a child, like, yeah. what are you invoking in their mindset that they're not going to go back and feel like, oh, if I don't right. listen, right. I'll get beat, or if I don't right. listen, yeah. I'll right. Right. And, and that's why these conversations need to happen, and they have to happen with every, it can't be just the people who are interested in equity, and, exactly. and it, it, those are the people, we're ready to jump into the work. Everyone else who's like self-selecting out of this and these conversations, and they, yeah. you know, exactly. and these are hard conversations. Like every, these are hard conversations. Yeah. I mean, they're hard conversations for everybody. And they're very, they're difficult conversations because yeah. for me, I worked for the Racing Pride Blue District mm -hmm. for like seven, eight years, uh -huh. and we just said black or brown families. Mm -hmm. Now, if I got here, or I hear women of color, parents of color, I'd be like, oh, yeah, where yeah. does that word come yeah. from? Yeah. Why are That's they? And then my ears just went to like magnify because I'm like, Cause it just seems just such. It just seems like such a word that you sh that should a, not be used. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like a like a step, uh, like a step on top of it. It's just yeah, like oh, you step on my toe. Like, like everybody, I mean, you got to color too. Like you got to color too. Exactly. Like, it didn't make sense to me, <laughs> and I remember telling someone in the meeting you know, because they asked me why I left. I said, I just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> I this word like eight times in like five minutes. Like every other word out the true. White, I'm white, like, white is a color too. Exactly. Right. 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 So I it's that. I understand <laughs> that that takes my mind back to white only and the color only water mm -hmm. fountain. Mm -hmm. And I remember when my counterpart was having a conversation with her kind of because the word bothered her as well. And the lady that said it said, oh, she didn't say color. She said color. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> but if oh. you're at home talking to your children about this and you mention a person of color, your child's going to go out and see a person of color and say, oh, my, there's a colored there's a co person. Right. So they're going to put that emphasis on yeah. it. And so I will say this every time I can with the district, that word so needs to be abolished. Abolished. Like black or brown families, if you say black, you know you're talking about African American. If you say brown, you know you're talking about any race other than African American. Like that to me just makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I never heard that word until I got here. And the first time I heard it, I felt like a lump in my throat. Yeah. Because I grew up, my grandma, I love you, yeah. my mom, we were watching a lot of movies around race. Mm -hmm. We were watching, watching a lot of documentaries about Malcolm X and Martin King. Sh movies, shows like Roots and Mississippi mm -hmm. and Burning and yes. all these types of shows. And that word was never a good word. Mm -hmm. It never resonated mm -hmm. a good feeling. Yeah. So when I hear it, it brings even it now, I just be like, and that's such a good perspective. Right. Yeah, I love this word. And it's like, who came yeah. up with that idea? And it's like, I, I, I strongly feel like whoever decided to implement that word 
did not physically decide to go deeper beyond the tip of the iceberg to the bottom of the iceberg mm -hmm. where it's like massive to see. Mm -hmm. What does this word sound like to people who are right. African American? Yes. Right. Because when I was in that training, I, I had to, I stepped out. Uh -huh. And I don't get bothered by things that people but that, say. Yeah. But that, yeah. That was a. Yeah. And so far today here, I think I've heard it once since we've been here at 8 o'clock. You're at North Side. Yes. Um, do you know the equity team? I don't know. I'm actually on the equity team. You're on the equity and team. This is the, these are the very people I express that this has started okay. to work with. Okay. Okay. Because I'm like, I, I, that word doesn't produce good feeling. Yeah. Like yes. It just You're right. doesn't. You're right. I said, it's got to be something different. And I told her, I said, and she's my principal. She said to me, she's like, well, why are you being from the school district you were part of? You probably heard them say black or brown. I said, yes. Mm -hmm. For eight years, that's all I said. And we knew mm -hmm. what they were talking about. But then I get here and I hear children of color. I said, yeah. that is not good. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. And like Brian said, you're further isolating the kids now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they already know. Like I looked in the classroom and there was like one African-American yeah. young man. And he's in a classroom full of kids that don't look like him. Yeah. So you say color, hello, he's yes. right here. Yeah, he's right you have him here. Way, yeah. And yeah. then everyone else is over here. So you further isolated him. And he already is looking around realizing that everyone in here doesn't look like me. Mm -hmm. And so now that you refer to a child, a child of color, you might as well just give him a sign right. <laughs> that says, here I am. Do you see me? Yeah. Right. Like, I don't, I just, yeah. I mean, I've never understood this word. So and I was is like, your, what? Is your, it sounds like your echo team team membership is pretty broad, like it encompasses lots of different staff, like teacher support staff or? Um, it's the principal, um, different, like the S SEO, mm -hmm. social worker, myself, mm -hmm. and maybe a few teachers. Okay. Um, and at my school, there's probably like four people that are African American. Mm -hmm. And a Latina that we have in our in our building as well, but that's it. Okay. And so when I'm on the equity team and I pull up my Zoom and it's just very Cecilia, it's okay. like okay, so I have to express to you mm -hmm. from this side what that feels like, mm -hmm. so that you understand. And with the uh, Patrick Marsh, I had a staff member in that actual meeting say, because the young man said he no longer felt safe. And so I'm, I'm listening, and she's like, well, I don't understand why he doesn't feel safe. I almost passed out. I was like, did she what? I said, okay, teach, this is a teachable moment? <laughs> right, I that's said, what I always have to I know, right? You yeah. got to clear nothing out. That's a teachable right. moment right now. So I, I know just... my perspective is so different, but I'm like, from, from my white privilege perspective, like, I feel like it's so important for me to get that out there. Because yes. I, I feel like, okay, white fragility, this person hasn't had the exposure. They're trying to open the conversation. They just don't know how. So I need right. to take, I need to jump in. I need to yes. be able to give that and I use it as a teacher. But for you to have part. to represent all black people everywhere, like that's a lot of pressure. But I let my white friends know. I'm like, look, if you have a question, because we 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 are right here. Right. 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 Please ask yep. me. Yes. 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 And I don't know how to tell any random white person to ask. Like, we're special. We have a relationship. Right. Yeah. So right. yeah. Come and ask me. I don't have all the answers for all my yeah. So <laughs> one of your recommend so we're taking like this is we're gonna be meeting with Michael and then obviously presenting and then you know talking about not only do we want everyone needs to be trained on this table. that we want our membership on our equity team to be broad across all departments. Yes. Not only administrators, like support staff, everybody, uh, mm -hmm. secretaries. If you work in the school, you should be there. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Right. If you work in the school, you should be there. Um, so Brian, do you know the equity team at Patrick Marsh? Do I ask the L team? Um, no. Not, so they should they're be. Not. They're they're actually. I think they're called a site equity. I don't know. Yeah, ours is just an equity. Ours is just an equity team. Our site leadership team is a little different. Okay. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, we have uh, okay. uh, equity team, and then our building coalition, um, which just works to try to figure out things we can bring into the school that okay. help the okay. families and the students. But the equity team is strictly just trying to figure out. How we can do this? Mm -hmm. How do we bring do this yeah. work? How do yeah. we make people, families feel more comfortable? What are things you notice that are like that's not good? And like, how do we fix that um, type of stuff? Yeah. So and one of our goals, obviously, is is not not only the equity team for our staff, but how we create that connection with all of our sites. Right. Because 
you know, obviously we're not connected to a school. Our office is completely separate from um, a school. Uh, so we don't see, well, we see our staff, but we really only don't see students until they, unless they come into our office during registration or they have a question or they're returning their, you know, iPad, Chromebooks, and same with staff. So what, you know, the connections we make will really uh, determine that we make those connections with the equity teams at each school. Because, you know, Michelle and I, like, sites should know that we are as invested in this equity work as each of the sites. One team, one goal. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And uh, that's part of the reason for getting everyone on board and trained and also to have this broad equity team. The second is to make those connections with the sites that we're in this with you. Like this is not like this edict that's coming from central office and you guys didn't know. We need to do the work too. We need to model the work for all of our right. our schools and lots we do it. And just trying to ensure that Sun Prairie that the model that they have every so well is displayed on the wall mm -hmm. is the model that we live by. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. To know that there have been several different incidences of race over the course of years. When I sit on, yeah, when I sit in on like a creative conversation training for three days, and, and you know, they say, well, you know, where should we do this? Like, and I'm like, oh, you guys, last year this happened. And the year before that, this happened. And that shows that the work has to go past the district doors. It has to go into the classroom and past the classrooms and into the home. It needs to be spread out. It needs to be a community, it needs to be a community conversation. It has to be, it has to be a community conversation. Don't say you want to have a courageous conversation and there's reasonable people there. Mm -hmm. Because that's not a courageous conversation, that's chit chat. Like the message With people really, that are open to it. Right, right. And there were so many people that were like, well, you know, that conversation makes me uncomfortable. Okay, well, I feel uncomfortable when I walk into the store and tell this lady saying hi to me. She says, oh, the beer's over there. Yeah. And I look at her like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah. Like I was forever gas that this woman said this to me. Yeah. But it's just the nature of the world we live in, but if we want to see the change, then we have to work to implement it and make sure it's coming Were you part of the community conversation? Yes. Yes. Oh, so, nice. like, I was part of the Asian, well, I was originally part of the East India. Not enough people signed up, so then they put us together with the general, and actually, like, there was, I think, like, five to six, maybe six of us. That's how it was. And, 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 three, and three of them um, were members of my family. Because I, because I, because I talked them in like you need to join this and you need to share your perspective. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't cut you off, but that's why I heard that the numbers were so low because this was a previous conversation that had been had before, mm -hmm. and people are kind of ready to get off the ride, mm -hmm. as you would say. Mm -hmm. But you, you get me on, you tell me about this ride, it's very excited. I get on it, and now I feel like I can't get off because I'm hearing the same stuff mm -hmm. over and over. Mm -hmm. But just because you represent it in a different way, mm -hmm. it's still the same stuff. Mm -hmm. And even though this is what you say you're doing. That Patrick Mark situation made it always a great scene. Like my mom. No, that made it all Do you sure. need me to come down here? I'm like, what is no? <laughs> <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> like, yeah. I need you down here. Is that your school? No, mom, it's not my school. Uh -huh. Like, and then having to defend the place. I just got here right. like, when that happened. I hadn't even been here like a good six months. And I was like, wait, it's something new? Right. And so when families hear that, they don't trust the district. <coughs> And I'm just saying, they're like, yeah, they said that last year when this happened. And they did last year. Too. And yeah, when they did the blackness, or they said that that this, and so it's just kind of like, what did someone mention earlier? Groundhog's Day. That's what someone said earlier in our, when we first got here. Um, Heather yeah. said, mm -hmm. it's yeah. like Groundhog's Day. And there's a little, there's a little change in it, but it's the same thing every single time. Yeah. And that's why we have to continue to push and push and do the work, and, and unfortunately those things are going to, like like I said, just because we all get trained in oh, yeah, university, it's, still, it's, still it's not gonna solve Because the it's things. the mindset of the people, yes. and you have to get in here, and if you can't get in here to change it, it's not gonna work, right, especially right. for some people that are, you know, like I'll be 44, so you have people that are my age and older that are just like, well, it's been like that all my life, or my granddad yeah, this, yeah. whatever, whatever. Right. And now it's about, okay, what can we do to instill that this new generation that's coming up mm -hmm. doesn't embody that same mindset? Right. How do we break that generational curse mm -hmm. of, well, that's just how it is, and that's how grandma talks, and yeah. no, it's gotta 
be something yeah. different. And I, and I noticed that in my own children who are much more willing to to uh, confront their grandchildren. Like if they hear yeah. something, yeah. like right away they'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, you can't say that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. Or that's, you know. I'm like, Dad, you can't say that. That's how I am. He's ill. Yeah. I said, no, no, it's not okay. What? Well, you can't say that. Exactly, exactly. So. So just being a change, we have to see. I always reference this to Michael Jackson being in the mirror. When I hear that song now as an adult, mm -hmm. I'm like, I like your song right, Michael. You just gotta say that. <laughs> <laughs> like, because it resonates so much different now than it did when I first heard it as a kid. Yes, I just yes, I know. Deep, but when you really think about those lyrics, he's exactly right. You gotta help people right. change. So too. obviously, I mean, that's why we're so passionate about this and we wanna make sure our district I don't know if you guys have any ideas on this, but I would love to pick your brain from a community schools perspective because on a personal level, I've been thinking what I want to do is really just try to get more families involved, like in the SEOs. Like I feel like I'm I'm in the SEO. I would I would love to get more representation and more active engagement. Definitely. Um, what are, are you guys have you had those discussions? Are there things you're doing or thoughts you have on ways that make oh, that more effective? I've definitely called some parents. Uh, since I've started, like right now, parents, since I've started with Distance Heights in my life. Mm -hmm. And we got open house next week. Mm -hmm. but not it's already next them, week. Not a lot of them are trying to, uh, not next week, uh, the week after next okay. week. Uh, we're trying to like bring them in, some black and brown parents, but they're not really trying to come over because we burned that bridge um, with the press mm -hmm. and just inclusion. So um, I was just thinking, like, you just got to find ways that people want to come back. You right. Know? Mm -hmm. they know they're, not, they're not looking for you to ask them, honestly. They're looking for you to just grab them and just pretty mm, much yeah, do it. get their attention. And then you just gotta make them want to come back just by the things that you do in the community yes, and the events exactly. that you hold. So I mean, the, the solution to get parents back is our action. Right, yeah. yeah. That's right. Totally, totally yeah. agree with that. <laughs> totally agree with that. For us, it's I sat in our um, SCO meeting and as wonderful as they are, it's kind of like, uh, oh, yes. Yeah. And so today we're talking about mm -hmm. budgets and line items. <laughs> Parents, we're trying to hear that. Yeah. 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 Not. Parents, we're trying to hear that. Yeah. They don't know what you're talking about, number one. Mm -hmm. They're not really trying to hear you talking about the budget and the line items and what we have to spend and what we, they don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. But that's not the issue that's fighting them right now in their household yes. or in their family yes. or in the yep. community around them. So figure out what it is that would open up the floor for families. So I would just like, yeah. Toss out the whole wheel and then just bring it back in a new scope and be like, what are some issues and some things, some topics of conversation you would like us to talk about today? Let's make sure we dedicate. So we have, let's say, um, I know it's like once a month, but let's say we have two SEO meetings a month. The first one could be about all the district wonderful stuff that needs to be said for those people in that area. But make one just for parents. So they can come in and they can be free to talk about what they need to talk about without no fear of any type of backlash, anything like that. Like, what is it that you want to talk about? What issues do you want to discuss within your home, within your community, within your school that you want to see differently? Mm -hmm. Like, I just feel like, like I said, when I was in there, I was there because I was presenting some information about um, community schools, which was great. But the whole, the rest of the time was strictly just talking about districts. That doesn't pertain to parents. That doesn't pertain to African American parents. That doesn't pertain to any of our black or brown families. It just doesn't. And that's the majority of people that are not sitting at the table are the black or brown parents. Because some of it was like, I simply waste my time. They're not talking about anything I want to hear. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you want to hear so we can talk about it. Yeah, I like that a lot. And I would love to just reinvent it yeah. and do like a North Side Parenting Network mm -hmm. and just open up the floor for parents and say, just come one time, you know, be in the midst of the energy, tell me what it is that you want to talk about, who would you like to see at the table? Because yeah. right. when we were in Racine one time, we had it, and we invited people from the city mm -hmm. to come. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of parents for that, because they had questions. Mm -hmm. Why are there not street lights over here? Why does this top look like this over here? Why? Did, and they were able to ask these questions. Some of the questions got answered there. Other people like, here's my car, give me a call, we can have a further discussion about this. Like, open it up. Yeah. And it's just not open. It's just strictly right. the school. Um, you might have like a district or two person there and then a budgeting person. And then they're just talking about stuff that's kind of like doctor language. Mm -hmm. Like when I go 
tell my doctor, please, I'm yeah. a service, and I'm going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I what you just said. Yeah. I should not have to go through this to conversation. Talk to, <laughs> talk to people on things that are impacting them. And, and yes, service. and speak to them on their level so yes. they yeah. can feel heard. And just don't sit there and take notes down, and then you stuff the notebook in the back of your drawer and completely forget about it. Figure out how I can, if I'm talking to you as a parent, and you give me three needs, by the time you come and see me again, I need to have a solution to one of those needs. Mm -hmm. So you can feel like, oh my God, someone actually heard me and they did something about it. Mm -hmm. Just don't be like, well, thank you for coming. <laughs> Grab your water on the way out and see you next time and then nothing gets resolved. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the part for me that just um, is slightly frustrating. Where there's a yeah. lot of conversations happening around the table, but they stay right there at the table. No, it definitely has to be community-wide. It has to be Con community Conversation. Wide. It because, has to be. Because... Like, I have seen some prairie grow in 20 years, but there has always been that under, like, things simmering. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. It's like simmering. It's always grow. simmering. It's an undercurrent. Yeah. And it's an undercurrent, and no one wants to really, like, talk about it. But no one but addressed the elephant in the room. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's there. Right. And it's obviously come out in different experiences yeah. that have happened, you know, within the schools, within the community, whatever it is. But unless we talk about it with each other, from people from di who feel differently than us, you know, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna solve right. anything. And it's like if you're gonna have a town hall meeting, don't have a town hall meeting and tell people what you're gonna talk about. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Have that open town hall meeting mm -hmm. and invite people in to talk about what they want to talk mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, if people are feeling like they're more heard, you'll have. Yeah, I love that perspective because I think, like, I feel like our SEO has had pretty good meetings. And at the end, she'll ask, What are some topics you guys, or what are some people you'd like me to bring in, sort of thing. But to dig deeper, to get to the real issues, and to really encourage people to bring those issues forward, I think that's a whole other level. Yeah. That it becomes a call to action. So I really, I really call like, to action. I like that. that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. That was easy, Justin. <laughs> I'm just paraphrasing. <laughs> But just real quick, what I like about what you guys have done is the, you were able to show us visually all the people that are at the table mm -hmm. and all the different components that come together to make this work that you do beneficial. Yeah. And so it's like the next step is how do we work to forward, yeah. Yeah, bring it all together and invite yeah. everyone in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, our, our next step is we're meeting with Michael uh, next week, I believe. Yes. In two days. In two days. <laughs> Okay. We're meeting Michael in two yes. days, and then we are going to present to our district-wide leadership team. And so I'm going to check out Michael, the new director of equity. Yes, Michael yeah. Morgan, okay. so former PPA principal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and uh, because he's we, really excited about the work. Yeah, he, like he just he so knows that I can't wait to sit down and talk with you because, you know, it's like we we're not the administration. We're we're support staff, and we're but unless we're all on board. This work's not gonna exactly right. Your principal can say this is what it is. Superintendent can say what this is. But until the everyday people who are doing the work are also living, breathing this work, it's not gonna change. The right. System so the at all. principal can say what it is. The district office can say what it is. But then the public will say what it's not. Yeah. Right. And that's the part that. Really and then something happens. Yeah. And, and and well, that's part of why I think administration empowered us so much. Yeah, I mean, and that's been why so supportive from day one. I can't tell you how they yeah. have been. Almost it's been every single yeah. When we we, we were a little worry because we got there and we're like, okay, are they gonna like buy us? Be like, what? You know, if because you, you know how the power <laughs> dynamic. I mean, there's power dynamics mm -hmm. in play, and they're like, okay, what do you want to do? And Michelle, you're gonna like do this work, but they were like, hundred percent all wow. in. Like, you guys really want to own this work? And I said, yes, we do want to own it. We believe in it. We want to own it. We want to carry it forward. We feel a responsibility, not only to ourselves, to our children, but all the children in this district that we serve. Mm -hmm. And, and the I families think coming we from serve. this level, it has a different impact, too. Right. Like, I, I like people can for relate me, For me to speak to another end. colleague of right. mine who's at our, we're at the same, like, that's impactful mm -hmm. to that person. It's like, oh, you know, like, she's experienced this. Wow. And I really got to rethink about things that I've thought and done and actions I've taken um, that have led to that. So, yeah. So, yeah. Our it has been amazing. They come to our meetings. So, Brad and Steph. Um,
Kirk was our advisor. Um, oh whenever they were not, when they, they were probably at 90% of our meetings, active participants. Mm -hmm. And so they were speaking directly to all of our, our support staff in their small groups too. So that's important. It's not only important for, you know, it's important to have that conversation with the employees that are right. And they were a office. presence and a participant, but they really let us have the floor and yeah. make what we They never questioned, them. like we, we did all the planning, we did all the back we didn't, work, we facilitated. And we didn't, and they didn't have to approve anything that we, like even our presentation, we did it and we showed it to them afterwards. Like this is what we're submitting. Yeah. Um, so they Simply really let us own the work. And they didn't, um, we never were told you can't do this or you got to take this slide out or mm -hmm. no, you know, they came to our, our meetings like just like everybody else. They didn't know what, they kind of knew what we were going to talk about, but they had no, there was no preconceived, like they knew what we were going to be talking about. Right. It was mm -hmm. never like that. So we were the equity leaders. They were just attending our meetings. So it's that is so organic and it's yeah. powerful. That was, I and I think that, I think that empowered like even the people who now have risen up mm -hmm. amongst our group, who we have sensed could be part of this leaders. Like, it's really made them like, wow, I can sit down with Brad and my three, four people in the group and have this conversation. And so I think that is so important for these equity teams, um, not only at district office level but yeah. across the sites, to have that ability to sit down with leadership and you know so that has been like a real gift for us yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah so thank you both yeah oh for you. attending thank you. yeah we appreciate it we look thank forward you. we look thank forward you. to hearing your presentation next oh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're returning the favor yeah. we're returning the favor <laughs>